would have vital signs here. Here you can see her allergies. If also again, if she had an appointment today, she should have an appointment reason already put in there. And at whatever point she gets green lighted and is ready to be seen, she'll have a chief complaint. Now the problem list is a list of her active diagnoses, or which is to say diagnoses on her diagnosis list that haven't been marked as resolved. Now you can access this list here also by clicking this DX button up on the list of buttons across the top and that shows all these. And I'll show you later how to manipulate these to keep somebody's list kind of clean because they can get they can get pretty messy and it's hard to look through them to see what's actually going on with the patient. We've got a medications list there uh, and then several other things will show up also. If it's a uh, physical exam, especially on a child, then down here at the bottom is where you'll see the results of their viewing, uh, vision and hearing screen that the nurse has already done. Now, the one of the first things that you need to know also how to do on any patient when you open their up their chart is to look at their old notes and see what's been going on with them in the past. And so, as you might have guessed, that would be by clicking on this chart button up here. Now, it will bring up a note by default and how it chooses that note is hard to guess. Usually it's the most recent note, but if they've got notes saved in uh, different clinics, then it might, it might not be the most recent note. I think I've noticed that pediatric notes get showed up, gets, get showed uh, by default if there is one over family medicine notes, even if it's not the most recent one. But anyways, you don't want to be going through here and trying to find one of the many notes uh, through through clicking these drop down lists here. What you'd rather do is uh, click on this document history button. It's going to bring you a nice little um, uh, window up here that shows you all the old notes that they've done in a list that is actually sorted by most recent to least recent. And then you can start clicking through one by one and seeing what they are. Now, what gets, what decides how these things are labeled? Well, whenever anybody saves one of these specific notes, they get the choice last minute before they actually save it as to how to file it. So you can see that many, uh, based on this, would have been seen several times in the gynecology suite, once in pediatrics, and then she's got some other documents that have been saved in here as well, some forms and prescriptions and such. Um, a little tip here, when you uh, are working in this little window, which you will be a lot. If you want it to go away and keep looking at the note that you're looking at, um, don't click this exit button because if you do, you'll see the whole thing goes away. What you want to do, again, click chart to open up this view, click the document history button to bring up your nice little window to select the note you want to see, and to get rid of this and still look at your note, click the X here in that little window instead. And it goes away and you can still see the note that you're wanting to see and you can read that note and when you're done re reading it you can bring the document history back up and look all through all the notes until you feel comfortable in knowing that you kind of know what's been going on with this patient based on their prior visits. Now what are some other things that we can do uh, to review this patient's chart? Well uh, we can click this button to go in and review all their labs and the details of that how to navigate through this uh, have been covered in another lesson. Um, if you want to see what prescriptions they're on, again it's here in the clipboard, but if we want to manipulate that list in any way we go into Rx and we can see what they're on and if we want to see what they've been on the past that's not active now, we can uncheck this show active items only button and inactive prescriptions that, from the pa that are from the past will show up in red. If you want to see any uh, correspondence messages from one person in from one person in the clinic to another that are regarding this patient, you can click on the message button, and it will show all the messages uh, from one person to another that uh, are about this patient. Um, if you want to see the order history on the patient, you can click the order button, and it will show any and all orders that have not yet been com completed yet, which on this patient there are none. But if you will check this box that show, says show done items, it'll show the, that patient's order history, which includes everything that's been ordered and has been marked as done. Click on bill to view the patient's bill history, not to actually 
build something. And there, nothing's been billed on Minnie Mouse today, so she has nothing showing up in her bill history as of now. Again, the patient's diagnosis list is showing up here, but you can also click DX and see it as well. And there's more information that you can get here also. Uh, for instance, uh, you can click on well, benign, benign hypertension, and let's say you want to figure out exactly when that patient was diagnosed in our clinic with benign hypertension so that you can go back and review the note from that day um, to see what went on when the diagnosis was made. Well, you can you select it so you have something to go on and scroll over to the right here. You got onset, reported, and entry date. Find that entry date, and that'll tell you. Um, the date of the note that you should go into the chart and look for to find um, the note from the day that that diagnosis was entered. Now other things as far as reviewing the patient's chart, uh, there's the result viewer that you'll need to go into to uh, look at the patient's clinical documents history. The details of that is covered in another lesson. And then the EKG interface is actually brand new in 2008 so it will only show you EKGs from um, 2008 and on any other EKGs in the patient's chart from 2007 or before will uh, show up in the result viewer as EKGs so keep that in mind uh, I think that's about it as far as reviewing the patient's chart knowing where to look for old stuff to kinda bring yourself up to speed on the patient's status. So we'll end the lesson now. We'll go into detail of some other stuff in other lessons. This lesson we're going to talk about the ordering program, how to use it, and uh, how to navigate it. Um, when you first open the ordering program, it's always going to bring up this dialog here. Now, uh, your main thing that you're going to do is change your facility to whatever facility you're in. I'm usually in red, but if you're in PEDS for that day or whatever, you change it to that. Um, you choose uh, the billing provider, which is going to be your name slash the attending's name. Sometimes by default it'll show up here with as having this by facility button checked, and you won't be able to f you won't always be able to find your attending. You need to always have it uh, selected uh, here under the all. And uh, if you can't find your name slash your attending, this is the first place to look. It's probably because for some reason it's checked under by facility. And this receive results user. It's important to always make sure that it's you um, when you're in your own suite. Um, that tells the lab uh, when the results come back that they need to send you the message as opposed to somebody else. Now, it's in the uh, PEDS or the OBGYN department that needs to be your attending's name or initials, not yours, because you're not necessarily going to be around in that clinic when the uh, results come back. But for our purposes, we'll have it set for me because we're going to treat this as though it's a family medicine patient. Now, here's the ordering program. I don't use all these buttons, but I'll go th through and show you the ones that I use. And keep in mind that there's a lot of things that you can do with the ordering program that I'm not going to be showing you because I never really learned how to do it. Uh, everybody seems to know a little bit uh, different things that you can do with it. And uh, the purpose of this is just to show you how to do the things that I know how to do. Um, the first button you see is the macro, and if and uh, there are lots of macros for different uh, uh, types of visits. Uh, you, when I use the macros, mostly for our uh, child physical exams because um, it helps me um, to real figure out which shots need to be given. Rem reminds me to do certain labs. Um, on certain child visits you absolutely need to use the macros for child physical exams and they're here at the top now you can scroll down and see that there are lots of different macros for lots of different conditions I use macros a lot for eczema visits because it prints it automatically brings up some useful piece uh, PDF files to print out I use it for otitis media colds things that you do a lot of visits for um, it's helpful because it keeps you from typing in the same plan over and over and over again in the in the free form. It just allows you to click. If there's something that shows up that you don't like, you can uh, stop it. You can delete it. Now, 
Um, I don't use the, the hypertension one very much. You'll notice 